something else. Uh, when I came to these parts two years ago, I decided to uh, visit all the houses. And uh, I was fascinated all these two story houses, you know, and they weren't built in the bold plant. They were built in the 50s and 60s. And I pushed had to feel my way. So I asked a few people. I said, uh, you have beautiful houses in this parish. And they were built, like, seemed in the 50s and 60s. And someone says, well, the Latin school is responsible for that. And I says, what do you mean? Because this parish produced a lot of priests and they went all over the world. You know, the great work on the mission, the Father George Cardinals in South America and Granada. But some of them went to North America and Canada and Australia and New Zealand. And they sent money home to the families to renovate the houses, the home houses. And that's why, that's why the, there were so many, there were so many beautiful houses in the parish. I hope you get out of this now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm in the middle of an interview. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else's phone was on silent, I hope. <laughs> so, uh, I so anyway, that's the story, but actually, it's funny because Sean, Sean Sullivan in, 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 well, first and last of him because when I was reading his book on the detach, and the same thing as well, that you had that in your book. Mm. But anyway, I'll finish now with, with another story. My first mass here in morning, some of the people came to greet me. And uh, this fellow came, he said, do you know me? Well, I says, Parachins, uh, I, I, I recognise the face, but I don't can't find him. He says, I'm Brendan Grimes. Brendan lives below Gordon Moon stores. And uh, he, he used to work in the, in, in the market in, in Cardiella. And I says, Brendan, do you remember an incident in the second year? I do, he says. i never forget it. And he shouldn't forget it because he was nearly killed, or at least badly injured, and I was responsible. And we were in the second room, I don't know if you remember it, Sean, and we were on a break, a 10 minute break, and we're hitting the ball off the, the wall. So I must have hit it a great for us, because there's this big blow, remember the globes they had? And it rebounded off the wall, it hit the globe, and it smashed. It came down right beside Brendan Grimes. And I still picture it. It was like a sheet of paper. Now he was frightened, so was I. So anyway, I had to face up to the consequences. I had to. the paper being a 50 year paper. So I was advised to go to the man, to the partner, to the new partner. So I'll never forget his words. He said, This is a warning, Patrick. And he gave me two of the best and let me off. <laughs> <laughs> Tell the story about the, about the, about the, about the go and get the lift or the pull with the... Oh yeah, I used to look forward to, to the market in Arva. Every Friday was a pig market in, in Arva. And the fair day, many of the days, went to both. But anyway, we used to get, when the, the, we always be tractors from trailers coming home. Mm -hmm. And we get a free pull. A free pull uh, with, with, uh, catch, we'd latch on to the, to the trailer. We be pulled to the doorstep, and of course our parents were delighted because they was home early, and we do a lot of work, like deep potatoes and big potatoes, and 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 and, and, and uh, work on the bog. And just uh, working on the bog reminds me of another story. I was doing visitation up in uh, Aden Moor, and I was in Matt Gray's house. Matt is a brother of Frank, Frank Graves, who was responsible for the book, that book, for the net boy. I says, uh, my, I says, is it any more bog? Or is it on the bog far from here? No, he says, is, is, is just go back down. See, I always get to the bog from the tar road, but I never did enter from Aidan Moor. 
So I said, I'm going to stop this visitation now and go back and explore and find out where I used to put the turf. I used to put the turf with the slave and the breastplate and all the rest of it. So anyway, <laughs> I got lost. There was plenty of work where I couldn't pick out my, my book. And there were three, three fellas and they were dressed in high business jackets. So I stopped and I let down the window. I said, I'm lost. I said, I used to put turf here in the bog when I was a youngster. And I just wondered where my bog is. Father Pat, that's your bog there. <laughs> and then I made a huge mistake. I talked about Brendan Grimes. Brendan Grimes is married to Bree Dry from town. And I said to the fellow who answered me, I said, I used to make tea in the bog and by the night, and I used to go up to a, a house by the name of Riley's. And they had a nickname, and people were very sensitive to nicknames then. And uh, the, I said, it used to be called the Jockey Riders. I'm one of the Jockeys. <laughs> 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 so oh, I'm one of the Jockeys. <laughs> yeah. you, you heard a story of Father Pat about. Uh, uh, Father Potman, and uh, it didn't wind up so well for you, I gather. Uh, I have one too that uh, had a happier ending. And it was one of my first days here in school, and uh, that was 1967, and it marked the arrival of uh, females in the school because it had gone co education. Mm -hmm. But on the day that the uh, girls arrived into our class, anyway, uh, they, they arrived late for some reason, and they must have uh, been enrolling late in the day. And we were uh, in uh, the science class, actually, and Father Plotkin was conducting a biology class. So I jumped off my seat to make way for the girls, because there weren't enough seats in the, the, the classroom at the time. And I jumped onto the bench in the uh, science lab, and in a breaking machine, it was a nice monitor, actually, and there was glass part to this in there, and in the breaking it too. So, I had heard lots of stories about Father Fockman and I was a bit worried about what the consequences might be. So he took a very uh, benevolent view of it anyway, and uh, he fixed it himself. Maybe that was the angle, because he liked working with He was very good, he was a great worker, yeah, yeah, very handy. So he fixed up the osmometer, got it going again, and he put a new name on it. He called it the Heart Machine. <laughs> 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 So the fact that was a bit like uh, the, the, the club ball went in reverse. He had a crusty sort of outside, but he had a very tender heart at the same time. Oh, yeah. He was always looking up for it. He was the, starting, he was the the of the students at all times. Yeah. It, was a very, uh, it was a very simple sort of school in many ways, like in our time here. I'm talking about the 1960s. And I recall one day in the room where we were sitting here, Father Fockman was the principal. He came in with a, there was a survey sheet sent out by the department, Department of Education, to see, I suppose, the standard of the schools. And he took it out and he started laughing at it. And he asked, there was a series of questions. And we'd give the answer. He'd say, is there a library in the school? No. <laughs> is there a science room in the school? No. <laughs> Are there playing fields with the school? No. He read out all of these, and there was only one question out of about 30 that the yes was the answer, and that was, is there a globe of the world? And that was, that was the nature of the school at the time. There was absolutely nothing in it. But the reality was, uh, only for it, all of the people around here, you know, wouldn't get a secondary education. Yeah. Uh, that was the one that was about, but it was a fairly innocent school in that way. It had five, five rooms, five teachers, five classes. And the first year room was twice as big as the other ones. And it was 40 in first year. Now this only stuck me in recent years. Uh, the, the other rooms, you see, were much smaller. And they only held about 20. So only the first 20 in first year got into second year. And if you wouldn't get in for lower money, there was no way you were going to get it. So that's why there was so many kept back in first year. But then once you got into the second year, just plain and sailing because there was room for the, the whole That's right. Mm -hmm. So that was the logic of why we didn't know why you were all kept back. We thought it wasn't necessarily that you weren't good enough for second year, but there wasn't room for you in it. Mm -hmm. Good off, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm.
there was a man that we used to pass by uh, on our way home from school, and uh, Paddy Curry. Paddy was called the Tiger, and he wasn't called Tiger for nothing. He was a big, strong man. He used to be a bounce on these bar dances. But he's a beautiful orator. He lived, I don't know whether in town or Shamala or Khan, but any long further old, you probably know what happened. So anyway, um, he had a beautiful orator. And there was a good group of us going home bicycles, big Pat Carrick and Murray from Bowie, Seamus Raggy, Seamus the Jockey, and Mickey Pop Mickey Keir. So then we decided we used to go down to Ballymore every Friday to collect his pension and he'd stay back and drink a few pints. So we said decided on anyway, this Friday <laughs> this Friday to treat ourselves to a few of his apples. So we walked and we could go across the front of the house. But there was a, there was a fence and this thorny wire, you know this the bull wire. So I was at last and we did the fact that we saw it got caught in the wire. Uh -huh. And I was trying to release myself. And the next thing the door opened and out came Paddy. He, was, he wasn't. And I will never forget what he said to me. Then he says, I give you three kicks, and the last will be as soon as the first that comes so quickly. And he was keep coming to me. So I like the board. I, I pulled away from the wire and I put my trousers behind. <laughs> You're in a house, so you had to do something. <laughs> My mother had a problem, had a job, and I went home. Did you go to that orchard again? No. Speaking, speaking, speaking of orchards, I grew up very new to school here, and just past our house, uh, there was an outline farm belonging to Matt Dagan down in Tremuri, and there was a, a fine orchard there too. And every September, it was like an annual ritual. Uh, the boys would go up to the, the, you'd see the boys going up the orchard. This is before I started even in the Latin school. You'd see them going up, and very shortly after, you'd see them running down. And the other, one of the other Dagens who lived on the, on the, on the rock there, uh, chasing after them. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it was an annual occurrence. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, things weren't as simple, I suppose, when I came to secondary school. <clears throat> I was enrolled here for the Latin school, but um, the community school, what, and the building wasn't quite ready. And so the first years had to go to Ballymont to the tech. And the second years were here in the Latin school. And the third years were over there in Ballymont. And I think the rest were here in the Latin school. So the teachers used to have to drive over and back um, you know, at break times, I suppose, they'd have, according to their timetable, you know. But um, there were good times too. We, we had great times. We, you know, we had a lot more subjects that we could uh, learn, you know, when it was here, as Sean said, in the 60s, you had your Latin and your Greek and your English and your maths and science, of course. And in the community school, we had a wider range of subjects. We had um, home economics, and we had art, and we had, you know, we didn't have music. That was just the one lack, uh, and a sad, a sad lack, I suppose. But it was a, a wonderful time, too, the new community school. It was very exciting when it was opened. And we were taught all about the Latin school and the hedge schools before. So we always held that pride. And Colin was saying earlier about the lovely atmosphere here, the friendliness that you experienced here. And uh, that carried through to the community school. And um, uh, Father Pat and Sean were saying, you know, uh, the answer to the Questions was no no playing fields, no nothing, no special science or money, but yet they had everything. You had everything here. You had camaraderie, you had lifelong friends, you had um, the world was your oyster, really, with nothing. 
with nothing but everything. You see, there's there's an enormous mystique attached to the school. I mean, among the community, yes. that the people who went to it knew what it was. But within this general area of Colin Caleb drivers from Patras Van Mug, there was an extraordinary mystery and mystique about it. There was big trees in front of it in my young times. So, and nobody would be in it, really, except the students, I would say. It wasn't sort of a place like national schools would be used for car drives and for meetings, but I don't think this would have happened with this. So what happened between behind them big trees, nobody knew. And then Latin and Greek, there was a fierce mystery attached to this whole thing. And then producing so many priests. It was, it was looked upon with awe and wonder, really. Uh, and the other aspect to it, of course, was that it's so different from now is that everybody up to 67 when the free buses came down on that is big scheme. Everybody was coming on bikes. And they came a very long journey something. You know, I, I was one lad that was in my class and he cycled over 12 miles from Mullin Arthur every day. Uh, there was one down from Clune and down towards Newton Gore that had done the same. And on a wet day to start off on a bicycle and get a wet one. It wouldn't be so bad going home, you could dry yourself. But coming in the morning was it was a diddle and get wet. And it's hilly country, of course, no matter what way you come with mine, it's not as if it was flat country up into there or someplace. Uh, the other thing I'm thinking of too is that even uh, I remember Sean Riley started teaching the same day as us, me and you, Pat, in 62. And Sean came with us from, from uh, Corn Fame. Uh, I don't know how long he was coming before he had a car. It was his first teaching post, and he came in a bicycle. Uh, but it, 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 was, it was tough, and you know, there was a lot of it, you'd get a right wallop, but that had the mystique to it, you know. It, it ran off as like water of a duck. I mean, to get a good bait and then to hold your nerve, like you weren't going to start crying or something. <laughs> <laughs> And that all added up to the mystery of it, you know, it wasn't, you, you, you'd be real sissy now if you, if you, if you I think you, you almost enjoyed, it was like at a, a match getting a, a skate and giving it to the other fella, getting a baiting like that, we just took it on the chain, it was just yeah. part of what he's there, for that, you know, huh? Oh, passage. Passage. Yeah. wasn't, uh, you were certainly weren't going home and letting it on, or you, <laughs> you, you, you get another new one, you know. But that was the, the nature of the school and the test. I suppose well, I think the yeah. thing you'd have to say about it though, uh, in, and we were talking about this earlier on among ourselves, is that the, 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 the curriculum by, by modern standards was, was very, very narrow. Um, uh, there was the emphasis on Latin and Greek, which is down to the, the history and tradition of the school and the fact that it was preparing people for the, the priesthood. And then the other thing that Sean mentioned is the, the lack of facilities that would be taken for granted uh, now in any, in any second level school. So it must have been a, a huge sea change for people like Hudson Bell who went to the, uh, a modern new school with all facilities and, uh, and uh, a huge range of subjects. Like we, uh, Greek was taught here up until 1970. Uh, I, I did leave in 1970, we were the last class to study Greek. I think Latin was wrong until a couple, few years ago. I, I studied Latin with Patrick Oh uh, Yes. Yes, and I loved it. And it gave me a basis for, you know, French and um, well, English, grammar, English, for God's sake. Yeah, yeah everything. It, it just, I loved Latin. And I loved uh, Pacho. He was a lovely, lovely teacher. He was a gentle, gentle man. And um, he just fired our imagination. And it felt kind of uh, like a privilege to be learning Latin because of the background, you know, um, to it, you know. And no matter what modern facilities we had, it was, it was a lovely thing to have. Or the wall here, the, the, that, that was the fifth year room out there, that one out the door, that's as it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first year room came to where Catherine is here, right? The fourth year room came from that down to the speaker. That speaker there, about, you can see the sh shadow in the wall. Where the stage is, was the second year room, Pat, is yes, right, yes. And the far one is still intact, the third year room. So there's two of them intact, the outer ones are intact, and then the other three rooms are here, what you see now. Small. Yeah. So they're very small. Right. So small. Yeah. It's amazing. When, when the numbers went up uh, in the 1960s, there, there were uh, prefabs over. Uh, I think they got an extra piece, they got a piece of land from Eddie Masters and all so that. Yeah. And there were prefabs over uh, at the side. Of the, uh, side. 
it's interesting you make that point, Shane. Uh, it's my understanding that this was to be uh, the first community school in Ireland. That's right. And uh, there was a bit of debate locally about the location of the school. Mm -hmm. uh, initially, I understand that it was to be um, established at Gig Cross, uh, which is in the parish of Drumlish. And then there was a rethink on that, and uh, it was decided that it would be uh, established here in Moyne, close to the secondary school here. Um, and in the interim, they built uh, the first uh, community school in Ireland, I think it was in Coolmine in Dublin. That's right. That was Coot Hill and Cavan, no? That's a comprehensive school. Oh, beg your pardon, beg your pardon. Okay, uh, that, that's my understanding of it. But going back to Catherine's point about uh, uh, her time here in school in, in uh, Moyne, she spent her time in the community school. I spent f four years here uh, in Moyne, 1967 to 71. I arrived here in second year. I went to uh, boarding school for my first year. And uh, when free transport arrived uh, on the sea, I was able to get a bus service and I came here. But I have great memories of my time here in school. It was a lovely place to uh, uh, attend. And I suppose the fact that the, the numbers were quite small by comparison to a lot of modern schools, it lent itself to a sort of a family type of atmosphere. Everybody knew each other yeah. and everybody looked out for each other. Yeah. And there was that family type of uh, atmosphere, if you like. And as Catherine said, that, that, that has progressed into the community school. And many visitors to the community school talk about that unique atmosphere that's there, that warmth, that affirmation that's there for everybody. Yeah. But that was very much part and parcel of school here. Yeah. And I suppose great credit is due to the teachers who taught here, who facilitated that. And the, uh, Catherine talked about the, the, the uh, um, teachers making themselves available from one campus to the other. That had begun some time before that, actually. Uh -huh. And I remember uh, during my time, let's say, during Intercept, which was 1969, one of the teachers came over from the vocational school in Bannermook. That was Harry Flynn. Oh, Harry yes. He's a lovely science. man. Yeah. And, and Harry was a great, great teacher, actually. Yeah. Great, great teacher. He was one of the deep standard teachers yes. in Bannermook. Yes. School. He went on subsequently to become the principal in the vocational school in Morocco. Yes. And uh, he's yes. retired since so I met him a few times actually. Lovely gentleman. So when you were going to school, did you have to pay for your, for your school in your, in your time? Uh, no, that, 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 it, it, that, that was a uh, free education came in 1967. Yeah. I, and I arrived with that. I would have, I would have seen, started the two sides because the first two years of some time this year we paid a fee. Of, Ten pounds, I think, and for five shillings, that's on top of the first few. Yeah, the same with us. We, 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 we paid ten pounds a year, and if there was tolls, as in our, my case, it's only uh, seven fifty. Right. Okay. Yeah, just, just marvellous. Yeah. I think that somebody slipped a guide to the thing. Yeah. But I must say, I found Father McGee very warm, and he really was ahead of his time. Yeah, and he had a huge influence in my life. But. Uh, when I left here, I went to work for a review to go on towards the missions, which I had signed up to in South America. And I came back here, he was full of wisdom. I came back here to say hello to the former teachers. And uh, he came up with me and he said, uh, What do you want to ask? Where are you going to? I said, I told him I'm going to Ecuador. He said, Why don't you come to your own diocese? So I said, I have to work on the missions. And we'll never forget his words to me. He said, um, you, might always get, you might get a chance to walk on a mission with this afterwards. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah. <laughs> I signed up for, for, for the research for the diocese, and then I was appointed to carry the chance for five years. And then Zambi came up. The diocese decided to adopt a mission of Zambi. And I signed up for it. And it. It's an extraordinary, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just about the, the, the money, the fee, it was ten pounds all right. Uh, but the reality was there was never much of a fuss on it. No. Uh, I'd say it never paid it, it never be asked for it. Yeah. You know, I don't recall it ever I know no. I used to get it. I think he used to bring half of it. 
from home at, at the beginning and then after Christmas the other five, you know. And it wasn't huge money. We got a free education of the Dunham and everything. The free education was nothing. The big thing was the bus and the yes. transport. Yeah. Because the, the, it, now, of course, you went to boarding school to cost money, but here it didn't mean much because the, the money was small. And as I say, I, I never heard, I never heard Father Faulkner asking for it at all. It said he brought it well and good. Certainly no pressure. There was no, no pressure. pressure. No pressure. But the big thing was, you know, it, but I missed the buses, but. Um, the, the bus was an awful big thing, like to get a bus from near your own house and yeah. the sea change, wasn't oh, it? That's sea change. Change. Yeah. The big, thing. big change there too in terms of the routing of those buses. And I know in my time uh, I had to go nearly as far to meet the bus as it was to travel to school. But we like to go to get on the bus. I got on the bus at the end of the Garford Pass and um, that was a good distance from my house. Yeah. Uh, but there was good crack on the bus, like we enjoyed that uh, trip to school and back and yeah. there was quite a lot of banter along the way. But on uh, fine summer's days, uh, we'd uh, go on the bikes and right. we'd, we'd uh, stop in at the shop at uh, Lake Cross and John James Donnellys and we'd have a chat with him and uh, he was always very welcoming of students. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember one thing, um, it stands out in my memory forever, I'd probably take it to my grave. There was great crack on the bus, definitely. But one fateful morning, it was the 27th of January, 1975. And I got on the bus, as usual, myself and my brother Francis, and all our friends. And Phil the Rock was our postman. And Phil used to come on a little Honda 50 around the place with the letters. And he was a great character great, a beloved character, and um, on this morning it was snowing heavily, and we just got to the brow of the hill, about a hundred yards from where I got on the bus, and uh, he flagged down the bus driver, and he shouted, we could all hear him, I could never forget it, go back, go back, Father Phil is dead, and it was the most, oh, Sorry to bring down the tone of it, but it, Father Phil was so, so loved. You know, Father Pat said about the wisdom of him and the wonderful man he was. That like he killed himself uh, working to transition from, let's say, here to the new um, community school. And he, he did so much work behind the scenes that we never knew uh, or couldn't comprehend, I'm sure, and his youngsters. We were just dumbfounded, but we carried on into the school anyway and got there. There was complete silence, all the laughter and the thing was complete silence and into the school and into the mouth. And Father Gray came on the, Father Francis Gray came on the intercom and prayed for the repose of his soul. And there was mass offered for him at around 11 o'clock, maybe, or half 11. And we all went home then. And Benny Reed got us ready for the choir for his funeral mass. It was at Sean O'Reilly mass. And uh, it's just, I think that was a historical day worthy of mention today. Yeah, but it's just the bus, the bus, the bus. Usually it was full of fun, but that day yeah. it was like a clangor that just <coughs> silence fell on us all. Our rest is soul. I have good memories of Father Phil too. As a teacher, he taught me English for the four years that I was here. Yeah. And uh, apart from school, he was very much involved with football at that time. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, in that context, uh, students would always be looking to uh, divert the teacher off the main mission and uh, get them on to their topic. So at that time, football, of course, was big. And uh, we'd, we'd always um, try to get him to talk about the the games at the weekend or how the Lockford team was doing. And it very good we succeeded actually. Yes, <laughs> right. That's right. Um, Just good for our language. One That's of the, I mean like like uh, in South Come he taught me about English right through uh, and uh, in nineteen sixty seven Patrick Cavanagh died. And uh, Patrick Cavanagh wasn't on the curriculum of course at the time because in those days you had to be a generation or two dead before you were included on the, on the curriculum. The Gates was the most nearest thing to uh, modern porn. Uh, but Father McGee came in and told us about Patrick Cavanagh, of whom we'd never heard, of course. Uh, 
uh, and he said that he had got his poetry and he had come from a background, you know, rural background, so it was ourselves, and I think he read some of his poems. And something that always stuck in my mind, all, all his memories, the first time I heard of Patrick Chan. Yeah, spraying the potatoes. I suppose you don't really think about it at the time because you're you're young and you're living from day to day and uh, you're not thinking about a historical context or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But it, it, looking back, I mean, it, we would all agree that it was a fairly unique educational institution. And I would welcome the museum because I think it'll be educational but in a, in a, in a different sense. And it, it'll bring uh, what has happened, it'll create greater awareness and bring it to a wider, a wider public. Mm -hmm. So I, I would look forward to it. Yes, yeah. It'll bring it to life in a way for uh, youngsters. We'd hate for it to die with us. <laughs> you know, um, I know it's still ongoing. History is still ongoing over there in the community school and all that. But um, it'll be nice for them to know where it all started. But actually, I'm actually thrilled that this is materialising. Because even the type itself, the Latin school, Listen, Latin, I mean, that's unique in itself. Nowhere in the world would you hear a school be called Latin school. Yeah. And it, 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 it's full of meaning. Mm -hmm. And I, I certainly, if this school wasn't here, I certainly wouldn't be here since the day of the Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think in, in different parts of the country, there's some sort of a, a particular institution that tells you something about the heritage or culture of the place, like down in, in Leeds from there, like the Ligna Mines, for example. Another place that might be a railway that's long closed, mm -hmm. uh, or a courthouse that's become derelict and has now been restored. But th this, for North Leeds, um, uh, it's great to see that there's going to be this interpretive heritage centre, because it's a very unique institution. Uh, th there's, there's no place else in Ireland that will come up with a place that produced 560 priests over 100 years and sent them out all over the world. And I'm delighted to see that it's going to happen because hopefully there will be people who will come from them places where, where churches were set up in, it might be in Canada or South America or America, the United States of America, who will be able to come back and trace yeah. possibly the priests who were there maybe hundred years ago and who passed through this building yeah. and through these cited those roads or walked those roads because they walked it before they had bicycles and I even heard the fellas that came on ponies that had a pony and that brought the ponies to the school uh, and one old man I knew he, he went to the pony from my area so I think it's great to see that that will be there and to tell the story of an absolutely I think that's it. Similarly, so I think it's an excellent idea. And uh, having spent a career in teaching myself and at a go for uh, history particularly, and there's no better way to bring history alive than actually to bring people to the location where it happened and let them see what, 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 what took place. Yeah. And this facility allows that and for us uh, who had gone through the doors of this school it's a great opportunity to come back here and uh, sort of uh, rekindle the old memories uh, of school and all the good times that we shared here yeah. and it's the good memories that stand out really as far as I'm concerned. Absolutely, absolutely. Come.